So what stopped us from making a thousand horsepower with our Vortex Supercharged 5.3? Let's find out. In this video, we grabbed a 5.3 liter from Strictly Performance, one of their boost ready models, and installed a Vortex Supercharger, non-intercooled. We then upgraded that with an air to water intercooler, then upgraded that with E85. Then we upgraded the camshaft and intake manifold and added even more boost. So what do you say? Let's check out that test motor and get to the results. The Boost Ready 5.3 liter from Strictly Performance featured a stock block, stock crank, Gen 4 rods, and hard anodized flat top pistons. It also featured a set of ported 706 heads from KTEC, and we installed a factory LS9 camshaft. We topped it off with a factory truck intake, then installed the Vortex Supercharger. So let's check out the results. We ran an NA and non-intercooled. If we take a look at this, we see we've got the power curve offered by our Strictly Performance 5.3 liter. You can see it's making pretty good power and the reason for that is the guys from Strictly Performance, this is a boost ready combination that they sell and it includes a stock block, stock crank, Gen 4 rods and hard anodized flat top pistons. It also featured a set of 706 heads with some mild porting from the guys over at KTEC. We ran a truck intake manifold on it, but the reason it made power is because this one was equipped with a factory LS9 cam, as we know makes uh, a good bit more power than the factory LM7 5.3 liter truck cam. So equipped with the LS9 cam, this Strictly Performance 5.3 produced good power, produced 428 horsepower up here. and 400, even 400 foot-pounds of torque. You can see it touched just 400 right there. So now let's take a look and see how much power it made after we installed the Vortex Supercharger. The Vortex Supercharger was run non-intercooled with all the accessories. We normally don't do that, but on the Vortex kit, on this Vortex kit, it was designed to work with kind of a junkyard swap motor. So it used all of the factory uh, drive assembly on the front. So in non-intercooled non trim, the Vortex Supercharger produced 606 horsepower and 523 foot-pounds of torque. You know, pretty good little kit. Uh, this was about eight pounds, eight and a half pounds. So it offers some good gains, especially without an intercooler. Now, I think we may have run this with the 85. I'll have to check and make sure, but uh, we may have run it with pump gas and just uh, a splash of octane booster, I think now, now if I remember correctly. This one, as I said, eight and a half pounds ran good. Now let's take a look and see what happened after we added an air to water intercooler and E85 to the mix. Okay, we got a 5.3 up on the dyno, got a Vortec V3, SCI, there we go. There's the blow off valve, discharge tube, got an air to water intercooler. This is a 5.3 from Strictly Performance. Stock truck manifold, it's got mildly ported 706 heads, forged pistons, Gen 4 rod, stock block, stock crank. Vortex run about eight and a half pounds. First off, I made a mistake in the last section of the video. I did not run the non-intercooled one on E85. It was actually run on pump gas with a dose of octane booster. So that's an easy deal. It was low boost. There was no need to run the E85. And we're going to add E85 later. As a matter of fact, we're going to get to it in just a second. So this is our NA 5.3 from Strictly Performance with that LS6 cam. Then we added our Vortec, non-intercooled Vortec. Now let's take a look and see what happened after we added the intercooler. So we added an air to water intercooler and picked the power up to 647 horsepower and 561 foot-pounds of torque from 606 horsepower and 523 foot-pounds non-intercooled. We did add one degree of timing going up from 20 to 21 degrees and the air fuel was kept the same. We ran dyno water through the, which was about 82 degrees, run through the air to water intercooler and the air to water intercooler dropped the charge temperature by 108 degrees. So it actually did very well in this case from two, like 216 to low 100s. So it did, it did really well. So we picked up quite a bit of power with the intercooler 
uh, on top of the non-intercooled version. And in my opinion, if you've got boost, you should always want to run an intercooler, no matter what it is, even at low boost stuff. Now let's take a look and see what happened. Then we added E85 to the mix. So we've got the intercooler, now let's add some E85. So we got a little bit more power, especially at the top. Now we also added one more degree of timing, which uh, definitely the E85 is gonna want. So the peak power jumped up from 647 to 669 horsepower with the E85 and 574 foot-pounds of torque. But this prepped us for what would come later. So now let's take a look at some other modifications we made to the motor before we went up even farther in boost. Okay guys, in an effort to increase the power output of our supercharged combination, the first thing we decided to do was increase the power output of our naturally aspirated combination before we added boost. So you'll remember our strictly performance 5.3 liter with the LS9 cam was making 428 horsepower and 400 foot pounds of torque. But we thought we could do a little better than that. So we actually added a Summit Stage 4 camshaft. So let's take a look at that now. And that jumped power up quite a bit. Not only did it pick up the peak, but it picked up power everywhere compared to that factory LS9 camshaft. So equipped with the Summit cam, the power output now of our 5.3 liter is making 475 horsepower and 418 foot-pounds of torque. So, and that was equipped with the factory truck intake still. So thinking that we could do it a little bit better than the factory truck intake, the next thing we did was add a fast manifold. We, now we know the LSXR is always good for extra power over the factory truck one, especially at these elevated power levels. So adding the fast intake pushed power up to 501 horsepower and 432 foot-pounds of torque. As you can see, the fast intake improved the power output almost everywhere, certainly everywhere above 4,000 RPM, and picked up, again, peak torque and peak power. So now with our fast manifold and that Summit Stage 4 cam, that Strictly Performance 5.3 was making some serious power. I mean, the thing was making 500 NA. That's pretty good. Obviously, those little uh, 706, those ported 706 heads were working well and the short block was in solid shape without any problem. So now we've got a naturally aspirated 5.3 combination making right at 500 horsepower. And actually when we put a radius entry on our 102 millimeter throttle body that we ran, it made like 5.08 or 5.09. So it was making good power. So now let's add some boost. Okay, we've modified our Strictly Performance 5.3. We installed that Summit Racing Stage 4 cam and the fast intake. And now we're up to 501 horsepower and 432 foot-pounds of torque. So now let's add some boost. Now we made a few changes to our Vortec. We've got a TI trim, which is definitely uh, plenty powerful. So as you can see, we're making some serious power. I mean, we just missed making 900 horsepower with this combination. We've got 895 horsepower and 766 foot-pounds of torque at a peak boost of 13.8 PSI at the very top. The only reason we didn't run this thing higher is because we were actually running into a belt slippage problem. Now we put an eight rib pulley on it and we went down in pulley size from 3.6 down to 3.33. We also put a 10 rib crank pulley on it for the guys from ATI, which works really good. But unfortunately, even that combination and running a dedicated belt just from the dampener up to the blower and running idlers without having the rest of the accessories on here, we're still having belt slippage problems. What this combination really needs is now is a cog drive. So if we could get a cog drive, I'm pretty sure by how this thing is climbing and how much more RPM we have with this combination that I think we could get to a thousand horsepower with a supercharged combination, which would be kind of cool. I mean, we see that stuff a lot on turbo 5.3s, you know, we, we add a good, you know, 78, 75 or some kind of S4 75 turbo on there. And we definitely can make a thousand horsepower with that stuff. But doing it with a Vortec is kind of cool because it's different. And I'm sure that we'd be able to do that if we can get a cog drive from the guys at Vortec. I'm working on that and hopefully we'll do it. But again, this thing was run with E85 
It was run with the TI trim. We still had the air to water intercooler on it and it still was running dyno water through it. So we jumped up from 500 to 895 horsepower and I think there's a lot more left. Famous last words, I know. Let's get to the conclusion. Okay guys, what did we learn? Well, the first thing I learned is that 5.3 from Strictly Performance is a serious piece. I mean, it has plenty of potential. We're just scratching the surface with this Vortec. But later on, they want me to install turbos, turn the thing all the way up, and find out how much it'll take. So we'll do that later on for another video. But for right now, what I learned is if you're going to try to run a Vortec on this 5.3, you got to have a cog belt. Are you listening to Vortec? I mean, I know the blower will support it. I know the motor will take it. All we have to do is get the belt to cooperate. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Make sure to comment. Have you ever had this problem? Do you have a blower? Do you have belt slippage? How did you cure it? Let me know, and thanks for watching.